After years of experimenting, I have finally found a mastering chain that I feel like gives more commercial mixes and are more competitive with what I would hear on the radio. One of the big problems I had with releasing music in the past is I felt like my mixes never really sounded competitive enough with songs that I would hear on the radio. Often my mixes would sound uh, dull, they, they wouldn't be as loud, they wouldn't feel as thick as some of the more popular songs that I heard on the radio. And honestly, that made me feel deflated as a music producer, like I didn't have that, that sauce that I could put to make my tracks pop. Well, in this video, I'm going to be showing you the exact mastering chain that I use to make my tracks sound more commercial. It consists of five plugins, so I'm going to be going over what each of these five plugins is, and I'm even also going to be going over the uh, settings that I use for each of these plugins. Now, the cool thing is that for a lot of these plugins, they're pretty simple to use, and some of them I barely even tweak anything, and it still gives me the result that I want. So let's hop over to my computer, and I'll show you each of these mastering plugins that I use in my chain. All right, so let's look at my mastering chain in the context of a song that I recently did. This is what it sounds like unmastered. And let me enable all of these. And this is how it sounds like mastered. Obviously a lot louder, but also more clarity as well. So I'm gonna go through these one by one and I'll show you kind of what each one does and the settings that I use. So the first one is black box. Uh, HD2. I'm not a mastering engineer, so <laughs> I don't know like the science of like what these things do per se, but this is a tube saturator. Basically what I do, I'm going to go ahead and enable it. Let's listen to what it sounds like just as the default. Basically all I do with this is I bump the saturation a little bit to 60. I'll bump the pentode up. I honestly don't know what these do but I'm just showing you what I do. I enable the air here and you're gonna see why because this is gonna add some clarity. All right, now let's listen to what it sounds like on and off. Typically, I don't want it to affect volume, so I'm gonna lower this output a bit and it sh I want it to basically sound roughly the same volume when it's on and bypassed. A little bit lower. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm just trying to add some, a little bit of saturation and I think it just adds a little bit of clarity to it as well. And to me, it just kind of glues things together. So that's what I do for that. The next thing is the Shadow Hills Mastering Compressor. So again, I'm gonna reset everything here. This is something that I learned from Lewis Bell's class on Studio. This is something he has on his mastering chain. He's the producer for Post Malone. Really, the only thing I do here is I increase this optical threshold until this knob just starts teetering towards this, not negative one, but I guess negative a half here. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So right about there, it kind of bounces to a negative one half. And this is just a mastering compression, uh, compressor again, just to kind of glue things together. Uh, why does this work? Don't know. This is what Lewis Bell told me to do, and he seems to know what he's doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and adopt that. Uh, the next plugin I like a lot, Drummer S73. This, I don't do anything with. I just turn it on and it makes it sound good. So here's what it sounds like off, and then I'll turn it on. It just adds a lot of clarity to the mix. You can mess with this if you want. I think it sounds great as is, so I don't even do anything to it. Ozone is also pretty plug and play. So with that, I uh, let me open up a default here. And I just go to the master assistant 
and I just do modern. I usually do high intensity and I want streaming. And for this, it wants you to play the loudest portion of your track. So let's do that. Oh, it's off right now. All right, so yeah, I just let it do its thing and I don't really change anything else. I just use the mastering assistant. Is it lazy? Yeah. Does it sound good? I think so. All right, the last thing is just the ozone. So this is still ozone, but I use their limiter. And so with this, I'm going to just hit default so it goes back to the regular. With this, I'll just move the uh, threshold all the way up so it's not um, making it louder. And let's just go ahead and loop this. With this, I actually, the goal with this is really just to lower the threshold until it's as loud as I want. That's basically what I'm doing with this. So to help me out here, I'm gonna open Insight, which basically allows me, allows me to track my LUFs, the, which is the loudness unit. So uh, this doesn't affect sound at all, but this just allows me to, um, uh, to meter appropriately. So let me pin this, which it is, and we'll play the track. And my goal is usually around negative 10 lefts. So let's get it down to that. I guess it would help if I actually turned it on. Let's turn this on. Yeah, so somewhere around there, I think would be good. So there's probably a lot of room for debate as to how loud you should uh, master your um, tracks. I know, I think the common consensus is that Spotify's recommendation of negative 14 is just too quiet. And if you listen to a track that is mastered to negative 14 and a track that's mastered to negative 10 or negative nine luffs, if you hear them both normalized to negative 14, which is what Spotify does, that track that was mastered louder for whatever reason is still gonna sound thicker and fuller. So that's why I tend to master at a lower luffs level. But that is the, the whole chain. So I got the black box here, uh, adding some saturation. I got the Shadow Hills mastering compression, doing some glue. Uh, the Drummer S73, just adding some clarity to the mix. Ozone 9, doing all the crazy things that it does. And then a final limiter to get it to the appropriate luffs level that I want it to be. I've been really happy with how this mastering chain is producing tracks that just sound more commercial to me, but I also recognize that if you don't have any of these plugins, it can be a pretty large investment to get all of these. So Slate, if you happen to be a member of Slate Digital, they released a new product called the Virtue Mastering Software, which is their all-in-one mastering service. And so I actually did a recent video where I compared my mastering chain to Slate Digital's new Virtue mastering software. And I'll be honest, the results are pretty shocking. So if you're interested in that, then definitely check that video out here. Be sure to subscribe if you found this video to be useful. And until next time, I will see you in the next video. Take care.